Hi, I'm Alonzo. This is a new video series that will teach you about home brewing. Today I'm going to go over the cheapest and easiest way to get started. We will be brewing a batch of extract beer. Extract beer is a beer where most of the malt has already been extracted from the grain. It requires a lot less skill and equipment and it's a great place to start. There's equipment that you'll need to follow along with this video. I'll link to the items in the description. If you're thinking of upgrading to an all grain brewing system or brewing outdoors over a propane burner, you may want to watch my subsequent videos because the best equipment for that application is different. Uh, first, you'll need an extract kit. Um, as you can see, we've got one here. You can get these at your local homebrew store or you can buy them online. This is a Doppelbach that I got from Adventures in Homebrewing. The Bach is a lager and winter is the best time of the year to do lager since it needs a lower temperature to ferment and age. You'll also need some type of brew kettle. The one I have here is a 23 quart canning pot and uh, you could use pretty much anything that will hold five to six gallons of beer. You need about three and a half to four gallons of capacity and then you need a couple of gallons of headspace so that it doesn't boil over. You also might want a, a wort chiller. This is an immer immersion wort chiller. There are a lot of different types. And it, if you watch my all grain brewing videos, I can show you uh, a couple of different types. This is gonna reduce your, brew, your cooling time after you're done brewing. I'll show you how to do it without an immersion chiller if you don't wanna buy one of these just yet. You're also gonna wanna use the, a good sanitizer. I use Star San. It's kind of a standard in the home brewing industry. Uh, it's relatively inexpensive. It's about $20 for this quart, but you don't really use that much. And so it's really inexpensive. I've had this for a couple of years and you can see I'm not even done using it yet. I also use a PBW to clean the equipment. This was developed to help break down some of the, the proteins that get stuck on the inside of your fermenters and the rest of your equipment. So this is a really good cleanser. We're also gonna need a fermenter of some type. So you could go with a six and a half gallon glass carboy if you're doing five gallon batches, or you can go with a brew bucket. If you're gonna go with the brew bucket, you've gotta be really careful not to scratch the inside. Scratches are really difficult to clean and sanitize and it can lead to infections. So if you're doing any kind of stirring in here, you're gonna to wanna to be really careful and probably not use a metal stirring paddle. These are really good for brewing wine because you can get the fruit in and out easily. And uh, that's why I've got this is, is I also make some wine. If you're also gonna need some way of measuring your initial gravity and your, your vinyl gravity, I've got a hydrometer here. Always keep your hydrometer in its case unless you're actually using it. These things break really easily. I've also got a refractometer. I'll show you how to use both of these to measure your gravity. You're gonna need some type of an airlock. I like these. Three piece airlocks the best, they're the easiest to clean. And if you're gonna go with the glass carboy, you're gonna need a bung to help seal that up. We've also got a brew hauler here. I'll show you how to use this. It's hard to visualize it. We've also got a carboy holder here. That's gonna help when you're cleaning and drying your carboy. Some people actually use those to store. I usually just use it for drying. Let's see what else you're gonna need. Some type of a stirring paddle or a spoon. Uh, you're gonna need a thief. This is gonna help us use our hydrometer and do sampling. You're gonna want to get a carboy cleaner. If you're going with the glass carboy, this allows you to get the sides up under the rim here. You're also gonna need an auto siphon. You could probably get away with not having one, but it makes transferring, transferring the wart uh, a lot easier. You're also gonna want a couple of spare buckets, one to store your sanitizing solution and the other one to store your sanitized equipment. You wanna make sure that everything that touches your wart is sanitized. Um, all right, let's get started. First, you want to bring about three gallons of water to a boil. Make sure you use either charcoal filtered or bottled spring water. Your normal tap water and some of your normal bottled waters will have chlorine in it, which is bad for the yeast, obviously. If your kit came with specialty grains, you want to bring the water to between 150 and 160 and then steep the grain following the instructions. It's usually about 20 minutes. 
What we're doing is we're converting the starches in the grain into sugars, and it's gonna add a lot of flavor as well. While that's happening, you wanna mix up your clean solution. So here I'm mixing up some PBW. Just follow the instructions. It's got different concentrations depending on what you're cleaning. And then you're gonna to wanna to take a brush and make sure you clean every, every bit of the inside of your fermenters and the rest of your equipment. The glass is easier to tell if you've missed the spot than the plastic. Just go over the plastic with, with a decent brush and you should be able to get it clean enough. You typically wanna soak it for about 25 or 30 minutes. Just follow the instructions. Then you wanna drain out your specialty grains if your kit has that. Make sure not to squeeze the bag um, as it can release uh, tannins. Then bring the wort to a boil. Here we are using our auto siphon. So to get the siphon started, you just pump the inner shaft a couple times and it'll start to siphon. I usually siphon this into a bucket and then use it to clean the rest of my tools, which you see me doing here. Make sure that you fill your thief and get the solution going around inside your auto siphon so it cleans the insides as well. And then you wanna make sure and go over the outside and just make sure everything is perfectly clean. We're adding our malt extract. You just take it off of the heat, pour your malt extract in. You wanna take it off the heat so it doesn't burn. Your malt extract may be a powdered type, and this one's liquid, but it does the same thing. Now we're gonna add our hops. You wanna just make sure and get that wet and then just let it boil for 60 minutes unless your recipe says differently. Here we're mixing up our star sand. It's a half ounce per 2.5 gallons. And so I usually just mix up half a bucket and pretty easy to use. It kind of foams up as you fill it. You wanna use warm water. If you're gonna use a wart chiller, you wanna put the wart chiller into your wart during the last 15 minutes of your boil. And that's gonna help sanitize the wart chiller and make sure that it doesn't cause any kind of contamination to your wart. Once your wort has boiled for the full amount of time, you uh, wanna start to cool it. I usually just put it in the sink when I'm doing it this way. And then you're gonna to wanna to turn the water on for your wort chiller. What's gonna happen is cold water is gonna run through all those coils that you saw, and that's gonna cool down your wort. And then it's got a discharge hose, and you wanna make it sit up where your sink will still drain. It doesn't hurt to have a few inches of water in the, in the sink, but you obviously don't want it to overflow. You can see it's it's discharging there. This actually adds a lot of speed to the process because you are cooling it down much faster, but you could just fill your sink with ice and a little bit of water and just wait and it, it'll do the exact same thing. And one thing I didn't talk about before is we you saw me put in one bag of hops. This recipe only had 60 minute hops. Some of your other recipes might have, you know, 20 or 15 minute hops. Those hops are doing different things. Some of them are Bittering hops, some of them are flavor hops, some of them are aroma hops. So just follow your recipe. It, it's totally dependent on what kind of beer you're making. We wanna get this down to about 70 degrees and then we're gonna be able to put it into our fermenter. So this is a good time to sanitize your fermenter. So you just pump some star sand into your fermenter with your auto siphon. And then you want to put your hand over the end and shake it around and make sure it gets all over every bit of the surface on the inside. Usually you're gonna end up with a bunch of foam in the bottom. And so you're probably gonna to wanna to put a little bit more star sand in there and kind of rinse it out. So now our wort is chilled and we're going to auto siphon into our fermenter. While you're doing this, you want to make sure and aerate your wort. And so usually what you do is just kind of move your auto siphon around so that it's splashing a lot of air into the solution and that oxygen is going to help your yeast. The oxygen helps the yeast do its respiration. You're going to want to top off your fermenter at this point. If you're under five gallons, which you almost definitely will be, bring it up to the five gallon mark. I usually go a little bit over 
because after primary fermentation, you're gonna have a lot of yeast and sediment in the bottom. And so you're not gonna get the full amount. And so usually I go maybe quarter inch, half inch above my five gallon mark. Here you can see me using my thief to do a hydrometer reading. All you have to do is push the thief into the beer and it will it'll fill up as, as much as it can. Then you pull it out, the valve on the bottom shuts and it keeps the beer in. And you drop the hydrometer in and you wanna do a reading. My shot of the hydrometer reading isn't very good. If you watch the subsequent video where I keg this batch, I'll show you a better description of how to do the reading. Here I'm gonna do my refractometer reading. I've got a little tool here I can use to get a couple drops. You wanna put one drop in the middle of your refractometer pane of glass. And you're gonna close the top down and then you're gonna look through it. You wanna look kind of into a strong light source and you can actually see the specific gravity readings. It's really hard to film that because it's like looking through a telescope, but uh, it's, it's pretty easy to use. Here I'm gonna pitch the yeast. I usually soak my yeast in sanitizer just to make sure there's no contaminants on the outside of the packaging. Then you cut it open and then you're gonna to wanna to just dump it, kind of make a funnel out of the package and then dump it just onto the top. It'll sort of spread out and then you're gonna shake the solution around a little bit once you uh, get your yeast in there. At this point, we're gonna to wanna to put on our bung. If you're using a plastic bucket, it's identical process, except for you won't have a bung, you're just gonna put the lid on and then the airlock goes directly into your lid. There's a little rubber grommet. So with this three piece airlocks, you fill the airlock with sanitizing solution, and then you put the middle piece in, and then you put the lid on the top. And then you take the whole airlock and you put it into the top of your bung, and then just make sure the whole thing is seated well. When everything's covered in sanitizer, it actually will force its way back up. But once it's dried out, I would just usually go back and push it down. Here I'm gonna put the brew hauler. It makes it a lot easier to carry your fermenter around. If you've ever seen a video of somebody dropping one of these, it's really dangerous. Not only does it make a big mess, but the shards of glass will almost definitely cut you. So you want to take the top strap, open it up a little bit, put your fermenter on the middle, and then kind of cinch it up around the sides. You need to spread the little straps around. When you're carrying that thing around, make sure you have the latch facing away from you. If the latch catches on your belt, it might come open and, and shatter. So here you can see this is 24 hours later. There's a bunch of foam at the top. That is carbon dioxide that's coming out of the solution from our yeast. And so it's it's fermenting at this point. But you can see I, I didn't talk about the temperature strip. And this strip I got from Ventures and Home Brewing. We're at about 64 degrees. That's actually slightly too warm. I'm gonna move it somewhere colder. But I want to let it sit and do the primary fermentation for seven to 10 days or until that bubble stops bubbling as often. And then we can do a gravity reading and see if we're if we're done. If you wanna see how this turns out, you wanna see me keg this batch, make sure and subscribe to this video. And if you like this video, make sure and hit that thumbs up button. Thanks.